Hello, friend. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. This is Pastor Pitts Evans. On this podcast, we read and discuss one chapter of God's Word per episode. Let's go now to the Bible and see what the Lord has for us today. John chapter 4. The Pharisees heard that Jesus was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. When the Lord learned of this, he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Joseph's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food, so he was alone. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, You have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well, and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his flocks and his herds? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks from this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you're a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus declared, Believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is a spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I who speak to you am he. Just then, his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, What do you want, or why are you talking with her? Then, leaving her water jar, the woman went back to town and said to the people, Come, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him some food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say four months more and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They're ripe for harvest. Even now the reaper draws his wages. Even now he harvests the crop for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps, is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work, and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So, when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. 
They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard him for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. After the two days, he left for Galilee. Now Jesus himself had pointed out that a prophet has no honor in his own country. When he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him. They had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, for they also had been there. Once more he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son who was close to death. Unless you people see marvelous signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe me. The royal official said, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus replied, You may go, your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news that his boy was living. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, The fever left him yesterday at the seventh hour. Then the father realized that this was the exact time in which Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. So he and all of his household believed. This was the second miraculous sign that Jesus performed, having come from Judea to Galilee. So Jesus encountered a Samaritan woman at a well in the middle of the day. And friends, first of all, people did not go to the well in the middle of the day unless they were trying to avoid other people. So Jesus was traveling. That's why he was there. They happened to stop by this well. But for this woman to come out by herself in the middle of the day indicated that she was somewhat of a social outcast. And so in the course of reading this chapter, we find out that she's had five husbands and um, Jesus points these things out to her prophetically. But in verse 13, Jesus spoke to the woman and said, Everyone who drinks this water, talking about the well water, will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Now, what is he talking about? He's talking about the water of the Holy Spirit. We learn through the course of the New Testament that the Holy Spirit is compared to water in many places. And those who are born again have wells of the Spirit welling up within their inner man and gushing forth these wells of the Spirit uh, being compared to water. And so Jesus is talking about that. And he says, he mentions eternal life. He's talking about being born again in somewhat of a, a covert manner, but he's using the well as an illustration since he's sitting next to it. And so the woman is stunned that he knows that she's had five husbands and she's living with a man. So she says, sir, I can see you're a prophet. And of course he was. She didn't know what else to say. And then she started talking about worship as if she was a very religious lady. She said, our our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you Jews claim the place where we must worship is Jerusalem. And Jesus replied, believe me, A time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Verse 23, yes, a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. For they're the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. And he says, God is a spirit and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. So what's Jesus saying, friends? He's saying that anybody can sing a song. But worship comes from the inner man. Worship comes from the spirit of man and the spirit of the redeemed. Anybody on earth who has a voice can sing a song. Anybody on earth can take a position of worship, like getting on their face or on their knees or whatever. But true worship of God the Father and the Spirit of God comes from the spirit of man. So this is what Jesus is trying to explain to the woman, and it baffles her, but she knows that she's hearing from a very godly man and a prophet. So the woman says, I know that the Messiah, the one called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. And Jesus then responds, I, the one speaking to you, am he. Now, friends, there are many uh, casual readers of the New Testament that say Jesus never declared himself to be the Messiah. Here he definitively says, I am the Messiah. I'm the one speaking to you. 
And so the woman left her water jar, a valuable tool that she couldn't afford to leave, and she went back to the town and told everybody in town what Jesus had said to her. And she said, could this be the Messiah? So they made their way out of the town, and uh, Jesus ended up spending two days with the Samaritans. And at the end of the two days, they said, we no longer believe just because of what you said. We now have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man, it really is the Savior of the world. So they didn't believe just because of the woman's testimony after they had heard Jesus. They believed Jesus himself. And they said, not only is he the Messiah, he's the Savior of the world. And so, friends, this woman went in 24 hours from being an outcast woman who had previously had five husbands. She was living with a man. And so she was not able to go with the other women early in the morning when it was cool to the well. She had to sneak there in the middle of the day. She went from that. She encountered Jesus. She went back to her hometown and became a one-woman evangelist. And the whole town came to interact with Jesus and ultimately came to the conclusion that he was the Savior of the world. So I run into a lot of people that say, you know, I need to tell people about Jesus, but I want to learn more before I share my faith. Friends, what are you waiting for? If this outcast woman could immediately become a one-woman evangelist for a whole town, you could certainly share your faith in Christ with some of your family, friends, or co-workers. Just think about it. Here this lady was an abject sinner and an outcast in the whole community, but she encountered the living Lord Jesus and immediately went and told everybody she knew about him, and it changed their lives. What can the Lord do with your testimony? What can the Lord do with the living water flowing from your inner man? He can use your friends. And so, Lord, I pray that you'd use each and every one of us today and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.